Hello. Hello. This is a test. Can people hear us? And is our audio balanced? Simo, can you say something? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I'll say that the HackMD link should be uh, provided in the in the mails that you receive. Uh, any other place where it was, Richard? Uh, I think just the mail. So for this course, mm. registered people get the HackMD. And um, yeah. Yeah, and different oh. organizations have our own Zoom rooms where we can like uh, discuss stuff further. So if your organization has uh, provided such a Zoom room or have organized such a Zoom group, then join join the other instructors there. You can also talk there. Yeah. But the hack and be is we... the main way we have we are going to have like discussion uh, in this course. So. That way, everybody of us instructors, not only us here in the stream, uh, can answer any questions that you have. And we already have a like an icebreaker in there. So, yeah. uh, if you feel like like get, type something about how you are using scientific computing and what are your expectations and yeah, how did you start on scientific computing? Then yeah. we would be interested to hear what kind of people we have in the course. Yeah. So here I've just shared the HackMD and well, you open it and you see it looks like a document. You can scroll down and see where people are writing things. If you go up to the top, you can switch to edit mode and then write stuff here. And it appears here. And this is really the way that we keep everything together in the course. So, yeah, so as you noticed, we're in a live stream, so you can't directly ask us questions. But in a course with 100 people online, no one's really going to do that anyway. Instead, you can write your questions here at any time. And we have multiple people who are watching this and will be answering the questions live. Also, whoever is teaching at the time will be watching the questions and, and we can react directly there. We'll also share it during break times like this. I'll also mention that sometimes uh, the HackMD can get a bit slow if there's a lot of questions, a lot of people editing at the same time. So if you don't have it, like if you don't feel like editing and you just want to watch the discussion there or, or just focus on the stream, uh, then you can leave it at the show mode and that will help everybody's mm. life because uh, it will like reduce the load on the HackMD side. Yeah. And if this... But, uh, this yeah, go right ahead, Richard. Yeah. And if this is anything like our previous courses, there'll be a lot of questions and comments there. Mm. So um, if they like, don't get distracted, by it. Mm. There's uh, also like if you if Richard you want to scroll a bit up, there's instructions or like uh, hints. Like you might notice that the stream is pretty weirdly like it's like this kind of a like a uh, not not a landscape type of a screen, uh, stream, mm -hmm. but but this top down stream. There's a reason for it, and the reason for it is that it, not everybody has access to multiple monitors. Uh, and that's why we have this stream in this kind of a top-down perspective so that uh, you can uh, arrange your screens or different uh, view uh, windows that you have in different places so that you can more easily like manage things. For this today's uh, material, we are mostly talk having, going to have the stream going and then, of course, the HackMD questions. Uh, but in the later days, we'll also run a lot of commands, lots of stuff on the terminal. Or, or a se separate kind of a, like a access to, to the HPC cluster. And, and for that, you probably have to manage multiple windows. And it's easier to manage them by, by locking them in certain places and, and uh, working with that. So, so if you want to organize your screen in a similar fashion as su suggested there, if you have like a full HD um, laptop screen or something, that might be a good idea.
yeah. Yeah, and let's see. So today we have multiple, mm, well, a lot of different sessions. It's sort of a starting day. Um, we You do learn about some important resources, but overall it's a very like general starting point. Yes, so, so, so basically today's topics are a bit more like like introductory, but at the same time, you can learn a lot. Like we are going to go through a lot of like interesting things that might help you along your way. But uh, we want to go like start softly and like give you a, a cost, get you accustomed to the system system that we have and, and get you accustomed to the world of scientific computing, because it's, it's not only about, uh, well, there's a lot of things uh, you will learn today. Uh, it's not only about like, running programs, there's lots of things involved in it. And uh, we have uh, multiple different views that we are going to be uh, taking throughout the day at scientific computing or from in, like how it's organized to, to what tools can you use? How do you work and personal views from uh, people who have gone through the whole ringer and, and lots of time for questions that you can ask uh, of us and uh, of our talk, uh, people who are talking. Yeah. Let's see, we're starting to get some answers now. Yeah, like, Simo, have you had formal training in programming or computer science? Yeah, some, like I, I'm a physicist by background, so I, I've had some uh, training in HPC, like uh, physics programs and HPC, mm -hmm. HPC coding in physics and, and programming in computer science and mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, I would say, still say that when I started actually using the systems, when I actually started to do scientific comp computing, none of, well, it, it gave me a, like a backbone or like a, like this kind of a foundation to start build upon, but it didn't teach me, like it taught me like 5% of the things. I know <laughs> so yeah. uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you, unfortunately in this kind of, it's a, it's more of a craft than than a science sometimes mm -hmm. that uh, you learn by doing and uh, and some of these things uh, well yeah. you you only learn by by experiencing them yourself and we try to of course make it so that you don't have to like experience them the hard way <laughs> that we have probably gone through yeah although yeah I had this metaphor like we learned well by doing it wrong many times. Actually, this is what we'll be saying in the next talk. But mm. yeah, like my theory is we learned well by doing things wrong many times. So it's okay to like learn and struggle and so on. Mm. But also like you tell a child, you better be safe or you'll learn it the hard way. Hopefully the hard way isn't getting a bunch of boiling water poured on you metaphorically. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. how, so Richard, how did you start with computing? Hmm. Actually, we'll talk about that shortly. Maybe we can okay. I'll yeah. answer that. Spoilers. In, um, well, I'll answer in mm. a couple minutes or maybe yeah. one minute. Yeah, like uh, we, we yeah. first first off, like I, we can go through a bit of the schedule. Like this topic goes to the, to our first talk quite soon. Uh, where we will be having an interesting talk uh, between Richard and and Samantha, uh, one of the persons who have gone through this whole uh, this whole learning curve of computation. Computation. Mm -hmm. So from from beginning to uh, upcoming PhD. So there's a, there's a whole uh, view there, mm -hmm. and and this kind of a ringer that everybody goes through, like this kind of a uh, crucible where you where you become uh, fluent in computations uh, it it's it can be hard but it can it doesn't have to be painful and uh, we of course try to make it l less painful for everybody and yeah. that's why we have these kind of a courses and we try to like get you accustomed to the lingo of the of the subject yeah 